Um, you said a bunch of people were out there. Uh, Ma'am, is there somebody who can help you with this little lady? Thank you. Yeah, she can stay outside. Yeah. Yeah, she needs to stay outside. Can y'all just take care of her while you're here for just a minute? Come on up, Miss Melissa. Welcome back to Time Serve, the channel that scans the docket so you don't have to. I'm Phil, and today on the docket we have a doubleheader from the Lone Star State. Judge Stevens has his hands full with defendants that, quote, make their own rules, and he is not having it. Also, with this guy, who will be in the main event, try and count how many times he says, sir. I lost count at about 20. And if Judge Stevens has inmates making their own rules, then Judge Boyd has ones who need them. She tackles a son who has a rap sheet as long as his mom's unkept hair, and mom needs to know that her house is not a brothel. Needless to say, Judge Boyd handles it in the way that we have learned to grow and love, and not to mention her handbag was to die for today. <laughs> Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe, set your notifications to all, and never miss the daily docket. Court is now in session. Let's roll, nerds. Oh, no, it's yours. <laughs> yes, sir. You're, you've been assigned to it. No. He was bonded out. You're Daniel Raleigh? Yes, sir. In 234596. How many cases does he have? Just one? Just one, no. Yes, sir. I do understand that there's a warrant out for him on something else right now. It's so it's still. It's a third part of the day. Misdemeanor, thanks. Misdemeanor. Is that UCW? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So there's a warrant? Yes, sir. Misdemeanor. You're not, so you're not going to be, yeah, they're going to have to, if there's a warrant, you're going to be taken into custody. <coughs> oh, Lord. What was doing on there? Well, there's a mess here. Sir, that sir, you're going to have to. Understand. I'm sorry. Let me speak. There's a terrible mess. This needs to be worked out. A human being was killed in this event. Can you appreciate the importance of it all? You're going to have to muddle through this. According to this probable cause affidavit, you were intoxicated. 0.244. That's three times, three times the legal limit of alcohol. You're going the wrong way on a free on the overpass, and someone who was in the right, the correct lane, was struck and killed by it. So let's you know get a grip on who needs to you know get a grip on each other here and bear with us here because this has to get sorted out. Yes, sir. Oh. He does have a scram device that was ordered, so, sir. He does have a scram device that was ordered back in April to be on his person. Anything that uh, pops up on it, though, as no, sir. any violations. No, sir. <laughs> your, um, you have no, this is showing on your affidavit of indigence, zero income. Is that right? Yes, you have sir. zero income. <clears throat> I had just purchased the vehicle in question. You have, that's not the question. You have zero income? Yes, sir. I retired to the country. You don't have Social Security? I'm picking that up October. You don't have a retirement account? It was all invested in the land. In the my point, it's a yes or no. I don't, no, you're I have telling no me, answer, sir. I'm asking, you know, I'm asking you what time it is, and you're telling me how to build a watch. Just you don't have a retirement account. No, sir. Where were you employed your whole life? I was my mother's primary caregiver for the last two years. And Before you that, you were you in your sixties, correct? Yes. Sir. Okay, so that's forty-five years of employment time. What have you done for 45 years? Uh, last was commercial HVAC. 
uh, heating, ventilating, air conditioning, sir. Okay. But you didn't have a, a retirement built up in, in that occupation? No, sir. Okay, so how do you exist with no income? <clears throat> I don't understand. I live on my sister's property. She, I, I, she gives me room and board and, and feeds and me. Feed you. Yes, sir. I don't think she also put up hundred thousand dollars in board. Is that right, too? Yes, sir. Have you ever been married? Twice, sir. You have children? Yes, sir. How many? Um, I would know the answer to that one right off the bat. I'm sorry. Why do you I have one child living at this time, sir. Do you have any kind of medical issues? Are you dependent physically or mentally uh, in any way? Or are you independent physically and mentally? I take serotonin. I mean, like ser sertraline to uh, keep my mind stable. Why? Who diagnosed you? You, you have ready. some kind of a, a, a mental disorder or psychological disorder? No, sir. When I hesitated, when you asked me how many no, children I had, asking my son died that, a month before the accident. My only son, who was active no, military, my, that's not my committed question. suicide. That's not my question. My question to you is your. Um, 62 years old and you're 100 percent dependent i don't understand oh. i mean i worked when i was 16 years of age i've worked ever since i have because it's just a natural tendency to be independent but i mean you're in your 60s and you have no income you have no retirement you have what have you built in your life Goodwill with my family. Okay. All right. <clears throat> oh. You still live in Berkeley? Yes, sir. What is the address there, please? Um, can I step over here and get it for you real quick? Sure. <laughs> and how long have you lived in Burkeville? Not long, sir. We just moved there about the same time as the accident. Uh, my address is 10342. FM 1414, Burkeville, Texas, 75932. Okay. That's 10342. Yes, sir. All right, Don. Uh, this is an announcement here. It was three weeks, please. I'll talk to the prosecutor and see. I mean, is three weeks good? Or four? Uh, four would be really better. All right. Uh, get a resetting for four weeks here. Thank you. No here we go thank you and jeanette rocher 
Oh. We now call 21 dash 3581, the state of Texas versus Caitlin Smith. That's you. Yes, Present with your attorney, Mr. Parker, and the uh, state's attorney. <clears throat> there is a first amended motion to revoke probation that has been filed as of November 4th of last year. Does the defendant waive a formal reading of this? Can we proceed in summary? Yes, Judge. All right. And raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm any statements you make today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes, sir. Lower your hand. In summary, this first amended motion to revoke probation states no. that you, Caitlin Smith, in this cause number, was sentenced to two years in the state jail, probated for five years for the state jail felony of driving while intoxicated with a child passenger. Is all of that true? Yes, sir. <laughs> Number seven <clears throat> alleges that you committed the offense of public intoxication on or about August 23rd, 2022 in Jefferson County, Texas. Is that true or untrue? <clears throat> I'm not sure. I, I thought y'all were... She, we, this is seven through seventeen. I thought she, you know, we're pleading to her. Judge, she has to plead to those, and yes. we don't know exactly which one she's going to or going not going to. This is an unagreed, basically an unagreed hearing. Well, then we're going to have hearing on. Well, we're she's she has pick. not entered a chose. She has if not. We're not going to agree to everything. She has not entered a plea yet, Judge, on any of well, those. I mean, she's doesn't know what to do. Well, maybe it's like. Do you have a plea on that at all? No. We, we then not. we're having a hearing on well, it. We'll just, we're going to take each one, one at a time, and y'all get to present evidence. I mean, that's what we do on a motion to revoke probation. Well, if we can maybe go through the motion and see which one she's pleading true or not true to, then. That's what I'm saying, Judge. She still has to plead true or not true to the count. Which one, sir, is she going to plead true to? Can I have a minute, Jeff? Yeah. Did you have anything to do with this probation or the show in Karen Riggs? Yeah, I took over her case. So. Okay, she's uh, moved on. Yes, sir. Okay, where'd you go? Another probation office, maybe? I think she went to Social Security. Did she? I believe so. Federal government, huh? Okay. <laughs> They have a retirement plan there. Wouldn't I wouldn't bank on it? Yeah. See what I did there? Sonny Eckert made that statement. A man who would never see yeah. the social. <laughs> I know where that money goes. It goes to, you know, the fund. <laughs> and then a uh, fund. Something that, again, you have just forfeited by that silly statement that you've made. Don, what are y'all going to be uh, doing on your folks here? I've got uh, three pleas. One carry, one was carried over this morning. That's uh, Ms. Rowe. And I've got two pleas off of this document. Who's that? Um, Dejean and Reyes. And so 
Jeremiah Butts and August. Oh, it needs to be reset because we're waiting on a motion to revoke on another case. And Can we just, uh, while we're waiting here, why don't we, on, do we need Mr. Coleman out? No. Okay, so on his behalf, Mr. Dusler is his attorney. Two cases, 23 <coughs> CR 220 and uh, F18-29964, which sounds like an aircraft. Uh, those cases will be... Uh, what is F-18? What is that? I didn't mean to put the F. When we type it, we have to type the letters in. I All right. Know. Okay, so 18 dash 2 Under the new system. Is that, okay. So August Coleman, two cases will be uh, postponed. Till when? I don't know how long it's going to take to get a motion for uh, How about four weeks? Uh, okay. 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 So I have two cases, but I only am looking at one I need to file. So all I think is definitely is another one. Found the motion to revoke has been back with you unless they're amended. So on Keith Dijon. Uh, I'm sorry, on Jeremiah Butts, what are you going to do? I have no idea, Judge. I've talked to him. He he you, you need to talk to him. Okay. I've, I've discussed it with him, and he can't tell me anything sensible. Okay. You were using English, weren't you? I'm, that's the no. only language I know. Well, mm -hmm. gibberish sometimes. That, yeah. Okay. Rarely. I think you're going to hear a little gibberish out of this one. Go ahead. All of them except for 10 and 11, you plead and create your Number seven. <clears throat> Number seven states, in summary, that you, Caitlin Smith, committed the offense of public intoxication on or about August 23rd, 2022 in Jefferson County, Texas. Is that true or untrue? True. Eight, you failed to immediately report to the probation office your arrest. And I presume that's the arrest of number seven you just pleaded true to, the public intoxication. Is that true? Nine. Nine. Uh, you tested positive on or about August 30th, 2022, on September 7th and 8th of 2022. Or the presence of fencyclidine in your system, PCP. Is that true? Yeah. Thank you. It's terrible stuff. Thank you. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's referred to as embalming fluid because it was used to embalm animals. That's possibly the worst thing you can ingest for your health. 10, on or about September 8th, 2022, this alleges that you, uh, uh, scientific analysis showed the presence of tetrahydrocannabinol in violation of your probation order. Is that true? Not true. That's marijuana. Not true. Okay. Were, were these tests at the office? Yes. Oh, okay. So that's number 10. What else did you say? 11. 11. Okay. 12. Number 12. Mm -hmm. It states, you failed to never become intoxicated or be under the influence of any intoxicating substance in that honor about August 23rd, 2022. In violation to be on that honor about August swim. That isn't a complete thought as well. Does anybody have a problem? <laughs> it doesn't say anything. I think it intends to say by you fail to never become intoxicated by being un uh, or you, by being intoxicated or under the influence of an intoxicating substance on or about August 23rd, 2022. Judge it, but uh, yeah, it says alcohol. It, oh, I see. That refers up to number it's, seven. It's not in the order the you normally see. Intoxication it. thing that she's already pleaded true to. So right. we're, we're it's it's a little bit out of order for what you know, right? Yes, sir. everybody. So that's 
We'll skip that. That you fail to provide verification of performing community service hours as required. Again, that's not descriptive, really, on what we're talking about. Uh, I mean, you should be high in community service. I don't know. Yes, she had 400 assigned hours and we completed 100. Well, and, okay, it says failed to provide verification of performing community service hours as required. It's just kind of out there in a universe without, you know, these, these allegations have to be descriptive enough so that yeah, uh, she can narrow down the global field. Judge, number seven, eight, and nine are the primary allegations we intend to go on, so I'm fine with skipping anything else. Okay. Okay, number 15. You failed to provide verification of completing the Texas DWI education program that was required. Is that yes, okay. This is you uh, in 17, you failed to successfully complete the Jefferson County Drug Intervention Program as required. Is that true? Yes. So are you therefore pleading true? To allegations 7, 8, 9, 15, and 17 of this first amended motion to revoke probation voluntarily, knowingly, intelligently, and because those allegations are true. Yes, sir. You understand by pleading true that a knowing and voluntary plea of true is enough to grant uh, these, this motion to revoke probation. Your probation can now be revoked. And you can be sentenced up to the full range. Of this offense, which is no less than 180 days up to two years in the state jail. Knowing that, do you insist on pleading true today? Yes, I find you were pleading true voluntarily. You understand and appreciate the consequences of pleading true. Can I get a update on uh how much time she's served please also judge here's the PS psi okay go ahead there's no agreement i present no judge um and i'll let her address the court on some of the delegations that she pled true to um but um the the, the drug intervention program she she states that the reason that she did not successfully complete that is because uh she says she called and her color was not it was not her color i believe and so she didn't go in for testing but apparently there's some misunderstanding or miscommunication about that um the community service well we didn't do that one um she's she tested positive for pcp a while back um that's been an issue that she's had she had a sister that died and and it's been very traumatic. And even though it's not a justifiable, justifiable reason to use anything or any drug, it's that's what she did. And um, DCP. Yes. And because your sister died. And and people deal with. I mean, people deal with things different ways. I mean, I mean, it's not a. I said, I said it's not a rational decision to make. But that's somebody that's addicted and has problems. They turn to their vice, and that was her vice. At that time, but it's a lethal option. I, I understand. No, no, you're, yeah. just, no you're the key person here. That's just a lethal option. And she is. You have family at home. Is that yes? Yes, yes sir. And 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 that's one of the other things. Yeah, she's been in jail for quite a while, I believe. And uh, I mean, she she got she was in jail, got out, and and has been in jail since she tested positive in this court. Uh, I mean, what's the point few times you're making though that she she's uh, their her, her family needs her? Well, yeah. yes. I mean, she she's. I oh, think she's, she's using PCP. She's how's how's that serving their best interests? I think the PCP was a while back, Judge. And I, I, you know, I think she's set in jail for a certain amount of time that she knows what she's done. She realizes that her family needs her. She wants to turn her life around and live the right way. Um, 
she she didn't realize how, how it affected all her family and she does now and and i mean she, I mean, she, she can't justify it. I mean, it can't justify it. And she knows the situation she's in. She's come clean with everything she's done. She's always been, she's admitted what she's done. Um, not proud of it, but I mean, it is what it is. And, and so I think she'd like to address the court judge. Help! Have you uh, represented her throughout this case? No, I represented her for quite, she had a, she had a, another case and the day that she, uh, she got put on probation on this case and that other case was dismissed for some reason. I don't know the, the reason why. And then she had a motion revoke and I started to represent her on the motion revoke on this case. When was that? Do you think? I mean, there's a motion and a uh, first amendment. Was it on the original motion? You think the only motion I have, Judge, is the first amendment on okay. my file. Judge, I, I think there was another attorney um, prior to the first amended. If I remember correctly, oh, okay. November of last year, there was a different attorney. He'd like to address the court, Judge. Mm -hmm. Well, the Judge Stevens, I just want to say that uh, I messed up and I made a mistake not one time, but multiple times. I have been going to the AA and Alcoholics and I, um, I also have two sponsors that have been working with me. I've been trying. I'm trying, and I do it except full responsibility. But I do have four kids who, who need me. Yes, ma'am. They do. How old are they? My oldest is nine. My baby is one. Well, so they needed you on your years in PCP. And then the elephant in the room here is that why are you in custody now? Because you came into court and tested positive for cocaine in january that we don't even that's not even on the list of bad things huh. i mean you were shuffling in here high on cocaine yes sir yeah. that was miss it's A myriad of intoxicants that you're using, but here you're you're sniffling and crying and throwing your children out there. Which who who? How many children? I have four. Children. Four, four. Judge in the underlying offense for which she had. Uh, pled guilty to uh, the intoxicating substances were uh, fencyclidine and cocaine, by the way, just so the court members. Those are terrible. It's obvious that the fact that you have children, as it as it's just very nature, that that's a natural reaction, that you, a natural response, that you would protect your children, which you don't do. You're more worried about yourself. What are y'all asking for today? Leave it to the court. What if you, what if I ask for your opinion? What then you I would say something over 12 months in state jail would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Anything you'd like to add? What do we from the probation office? Do you feel as though y'all have exhausted all avenues um, of assistance for her based there. upon her unwillingness to cooperate with you, with the probation office? For everything from the previous officer, it's like 
they tried JCDI and that was unsuccessful discharge. And then they recommended safety, but she was adamant that she would not go. And then that just kind of ties around me. Okay. That's oh, what it's where's your problem right there? She has a chance to help herself. That's that's a good program, but no one forces anybody. Kind of flies in the face of I have four children at home. That kind of it would be something that would be helpful to you, but that's the way you were analyzing things, which is uh, incorrect but that you have a you're a grown-up you get to make a choice anything else anybody wants to add? no if no, not you know. so the only reason i did not accept safety is because they told me that i would be gone a year in three months yeah, to the it, could be, it could be it could be a while yeah, and I just said, if I was going to do that away from my kids, I might as well come home and don't have to worry about probation where I could work and travel with my sweet boy. That's the only No, reason. but you're still forgetting. You just don't go to St. Pete for, for a rest and relaxation. It's not a vacation away from home from the kids. No, no it's, it's a process of helping you on treatment for a habit that you are unable to take care of now uh, but you're a grown-up you get to make a choice in spite of the fact that it is to me as i look at this in your worst interest and in your family's worst interest but you're the grown-up you get to make the choice nobody's going to beg uh, we've got two only x amount of slots and those are needed and people who want to help themselves are the ones who get to go because it would be a futility if you didn't have your mind in the right place that you wanted to cooperate with the facility and in spite of the fact that it is a very high has a high rate of success but nobody is forced anything else you want to add i'm also a trustee i've been working since april 29 you have 197 days credit is what you have that's a little over that's about seven months not quite seven months but it's um <clears throat> anything else if not uh the court didn't want to read into the record just a, a summary of of why you're here in the first place um this indictment 21 385 81 uh alleges that you committed that you operated a motor vehicle in a public place while intoxicated and there are were two passengers under 15 years of age in uh the vehicle and um Police stopped you at night here in Beaumont for driving um, at a very low rate of speed that was a danger to other vehicles as well as yourself. There were two children in the car. They were little bitty kids. One of them was uh, it's like one and the other one was four. Unrestrained, not in any kind of restraint seats. And they were in the back seat. The uh, when the police stopped you, they were talking to you. The car began to roll roll uh, toward another parked vehicle. They had to reach in and put the vehicle in park, as you uh, seemed to be unable to understand what they were saying. You admitted to using a uh, powder while visiting a friend's house on Adams Street. Your blood was tested and it had cocaine and fencyclidine in it. So, see, the problem here is that's just not you. Obviously, your kids that you're so upset about were put in harm's way. You had a chance to go to, uh, to um, a facility that 
has a high rate of success to help you, but you've refused to try that method. And so you have really no tools nor self-discipline uh, when you leave to really deal with your issue. But you've made a choice. And I think it's a poor choice. But what we've got to do is now, uh, in the situation you're in and your poor thinking, we've got to figure out how do we and take care of others who are put in harm's way, like children, or other people who drive on the road. All right, we have nothing further. I think I've analyzed that enough. There is sufficient evidence supporting this first amended motion to revoke probation to grant it by a preponderance of the evidence or greater. As allegations 7, 8, 9, 15, and 17 have been proved, proven true by a preponderance of the evidence or greater. Your probation is revoked. You were hereby sentenced to confinement in the state jail for 15 months. You will be given credit for the time uh, you have served. Anything else to add? If not, that is all on this case. Besides, sure. But I just like hot maple syrup. I like that. Yeah, so. Uh, Vashon, do we have results? Positive for THC. Okay. All right, let's bring them on out. Do you have a base level or No, they can't give base level. I'm working in area. I know, and you're a teacher too. About to teach. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, sometimes clients don't tell you everything. Well, no, and I haven't talked to his mom about that. So, I mean, okay. Hey, moms are right here. All right, we're back on the record. So when's the last time you used marijuana? Uh, about a week ago, it was a candy bar. Okay, you're gonna need to speak up. Right now is not the time to be too cool for school. It was about a, about a week ago. It was a candy bar, so I my voice is just kind of deep and low. Right. So why are you doing marijuana when you know you have sentencing and you know I could send you to prison for five years because I'm sure your attorney will tell you and I'm sure the state will tell you, in this court, age is just a number. I'm not gonna treat you like a child because you're not a child, you're in adult, adult court. I don't know why people wanna use some drugs before they come to court and then try to throw themselves on the mercy of the court. State is silent, but you're here for a serious offense where you could end up going to prison for five years. And I will tell you this, if you end up going to prison for five years, it's not your mom's fault, it's not your attorney's fault because I'm sure your attorney probably already told you that I always, well, not always, but usually ask for a drug test. And all you had to do was come into court clean today. And if I were to send you to prison today, which I haven't made up my mind on that, it would be entirely your fault because your criminal history is just insane for someone your age. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. So what are you doing with your life? Well. I'm not going to say that, you know, in the past, that, you know, it was a regret because jail kind of did help me out, you know, I had problems to help me. Oh, wait, let's do this. Let's stop saying, you know, after every sentence, I want you to concentrate and try not to say, you know, a lot of people come before me and they say, it's like, well, like this and like that. Okay. Your attorney is also a teacher, as am I. And I will tell you, he does not like his children saying, you know. It's like, so let's try not to have that when we speak. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Uh, well, I went to school for you know construction. You know, it's always been like you know, have a dream job, you know what I mean? I mean sorry, it's just how it's Can I ask like, him a few questions, Your Honor? No, I, I wanna Okay, you wanna I wanna hear him. Well, I went to construction for about three years for I mean the school for construction, you know, I got my ACCR, my you know? See, it's hard, and I'm, and I'm doing this not to make fun of you, but you've ha you have to learn how to speak, not like you speak with your friends, because this is a professional setting. And when you go do job interviews, 
people are not going to want to hear. It's like, you know, so concentrate on not saying those things. It's for the betterment of you. So concentrate, not saying that and not saying, okay, and it's like, and I want you to stand up straight and I want you to stop mumbling and I want you to speak so I can hear you because I'm trying to make a decision on whether or not to send you to prison. Yes, ma'am. So go for it. I went to school for three years for construction. I got, since then I got my NCCR, OSHA, and my carp level in carpentry, you know, cabinets and stuff like that. And you have an opportunity have, for a job? Yeah, I have an opportunity for a job. I have a neighbor that does construction. So does your neighbor know that you're doing marijuana? Uh, yes, ma'am. You're telling me that your neighbor wants to hire you and your neighbor knows that you're doing marijuana. Tell the truth. No, ma'am. Here's the other thing. Do not be dishonest with me. I do not like when people are dishonest. You cannot do construction and use drugs. If you do, something's going to happen. Either there's going to be an accident at the job. And I have relatives who do construction work. I have relatives who drive. Anytime there's an accident, the first thing they want to, them to do, whether it's their fault or not, is take a drug test. And if there were an accident at a construction site, they would have you take a drug test. You would be positive for marijuana like you're positive today, and you would be fired. And they will be looking at a civil suit because someone is on their site using drugs. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. And are you living with your mother? Yes, ma'am. I know she doesn't want drugs in her house. Yes, ma'am. Can I see his mom? Absolutely. Ma'am, come on up. Hey, Mr. Turner. And you had requested her, Judge, and yes. made sure she wanted to be here as well. Thank you. You might can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So, hope you got. I'm gonna sit down. All right. If you can lower your mask and state your name for the record. Uh, my name is Sir Tracy. Uh, All right. And are you his mother? Uh, yes. What does he spend his day doing? Um. Well, just normal sleeping. Um, he goes and helps me. Um, with Ubering. How does he help you with Ubering? Uh, he delivers the food. Does he have any friends over? Um, not really. No. Does he have a curfew? Oh, well, he has a GPS on, so he doesn't get to leave. Um, he's, he's just gone from 2 to 10, and then he's at home. I don't really have any. He's different. He's calmer. Do, does he help you clean the home? Um, he does. He cleans his room. That's the most important thing is keeping his room clean. That's what I care about is every, every kid can clean their own room and wash their own own dishes. That's great with me because that is the most important thing is if he can make sure he cleans his room because I know he doesn't make a lot of the mess that's in the kitchen. It's not him. Um, but when he does, he, he's very good at cleaning. He's, he's different. All right, who, who all is in the household? So it's me, it's um, Lonzo, my three other kids. Um, my friend comes around once in a while, but he doesn't live there, but he does. So are the people in the home just his siblings? Just his siblings. His girlfriend comes, but she doesn't stay. She just And comes. I'm hoping she's not in a room, in a bedroom with the door closed with him. Um, yes. Oh, that needs to stop. I, I, I don't know how parents do it today, but what I can tell you in my household when I was growing up, number one, there were no boys in bedrooms. Yeah. Number two, they were only in common areas. And number three, they had to call before they came. Right. And when my grandmother would babysit me, my aunt had a boyfriend to come over. And you know what ended up happening? He overstayed his welcome. And you know what my grandmother told him? 
no one is going to come into my home and try to outsit me. And she put him out from the common area. Now, he hung around and now he and my aunt have been married for like 30 years. So I guess he was like, I'm going to take what your grandmother is dishing out. But he should not be in a bedroom with a door closed with his girlfriend. You know why? Because one, he's not ready to have a child because he's using marijuana. He has all this criminal history. And any mother who would allow a girlfriend to see someone with the baggage he has when he doesn't have his life in order, I question that mother. And he may end up improving his life, but the way his life stands right now, it's chaos. It's chaos with the GPS. It's chaos because he's looking at five years prison and you have some girl coming over in his bedroom with the door closed, that equals possibility of children. And are you ready to be a grandmother from him? Uh, no, I, they both take care of themselves to the point where they are. No, no, they don't. They're, they're young. And young children tend to do dumb things, whether they have been raised by Mary Poppins or not, they still do dumb things. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't understand how parents allow children who are not married to come into their home and treat their home, as my grandmother used to say, like a hotel motel. That should not be happening. And you know why? Because it sets a bad example for his siblings. And then your home becomes a hotel motel. The only difference is they don't have to pay for it. Thank you. So that needs to stop. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, here is your choice. I can give you deferred adjudication. If I give you deferred adjudication, if you are revoked, you want to be looking at 10 years in prison. Or I can send you to prison for two years and you will be done. Which would you prefer? Adjudication. Right. And what I can tell you is Deputy Laura tells me all the time that she doesn't know how people do probation in this court because probation for in my court is difficult because if I give you probation, I want you to be rehabilitated. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. The court is going to sentence you to five years deferred adjudication. There's a $1,500 fine that will be probated. There's to be proof of employment within 30 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. There's to be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. Regular UAs. I'm gonna want him tested for levels. Those levels have better start going down. You understand? Yes, ma'am. And is this girlfriend you have, is she using as well? No, ma'am. Another reason why she shouldn't be with you. It sounds like she doesn't use drugs, but you do. And then you have these criminal cases and you've just been placed on deferred for felony in possession of a weapon. You need to ask yourself, why is she with me? And if it's because she sees something in you, you need to ask yourself, what does she see in me? And the fact that she's taking a chance on you you need to start doing better. He's going to remain on GPS. I'm going to want a curfew. The only exception to the curfew is if he's at work. So he's going to be in the home by 8 p.m. And if he's not working on weekends, he is to remain at home on the weekends. So there will be no partying for you. Your Honor, if I may. So the construction job, with his neighbor that he was talking about, he was saying that, how is that gonna work with GPS? Because I don't know if that person, well, that's what we need to find out. We need to talk to him and see if he can arrange his schedule. It's, it's on a, it's on a, the, the problem we have with the GPS, it, it's on a school campus and they go around military bases. Mm -hmm. and they, they do the rules. Oh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yes. They want you working, okay? They want you yes. using your craft, but you also gotta show this court that you're gonna be doing what you need to do. 
All right, so it's par partial GPS. All right, it's partial GPS for employment. I'm gonna want field visits one time per month. 200 hours of community service restitution. Uh, probation, is there anything else he needs? No, no, he, he, my understanding, he's going to be working throughout the week. So he doesn't leave the house till 7 a.m. And he's back at 8 p.m. But if he's at work, then he can work. And Judge, I appreciate your thorough, thoroughness. I just need to make sure he understands this. You're saying if that construction job, if he doesn't, if he cannot have the GPS, you're saying then he cannot work that job. Is that what you're saying? Well, let's just see. I don't believe in crossing bridges until they're they're built. Agree, so let's see where we are on that. And then if there's an issue with that, then he can come back to yes, the court. And this court to be successful on probation, communication is key. So if there's an issue, talk to the probation. If you're not uh, able to speak with probation or you feel like they're not addressing your issue, then come to court and address it with me. Very good. Well, the issues on the construction job side is not with this side. That's the reason I haven't been able to work yet. Okay, I, I don't understand what you're the, saying. The issues on the uh, construction side, that's why I haven't been able to work yet. Like, what is the issue? It's, it's the monitor and me being around, you know, got to be on a school campuses, military bases. It you're just saying, doesn't look right in, in the field. So you need to talk to that boss and see if that's a no-go. In other yeah, words. I mean, nah, get, I, some I, boots, uh, get some big boots Get some big boots on pull your pants leg over the, the GPS. Here's the reason why you're on GPS. I don't just put people on GPS. Sometimes people who are on probation, they get taken off of GPS. The reason why you're on GPS is because you are not even doing what you're supposed to do with this hanging over your head. You knew that I could send you to prison for potentially five years and you chose marijuana over having a better shot at not going to prison. And I'm going to want a tap evaluation. Oh, that is true. What are they recommending? All right. What I'm going to do with you, I'm going to want uh, 90 sober meetings in 90 days. And those are all over the city. You understand? Yes, ma'am. Are you able to stop using marijuana or you need some type of intervention? Um, be able to stop. All right. Probation. Is there anything else? Is there anything else you need from the court in order to be successful? Speak now or forever hold your peace. It's just, it's, I'm concerned about the job. You know, it's kind of my dream job. And... No, wear long pants. And I've said it. I'm going to say it again. And maybe the mayor one is clouding your you're mine, but this is what I'm telling you. Wear long pants, wear bigger boots. If there's another issue where the construction job is saying you cannot wear GPS to work this job, then that means that bridge has been built. Your attorney can come back to me and we can address it. But if they are saying that um, construction, you can't have that with construction, you're gonna need that person to come into court or either do an affidavit with your attorney or directly speak to your attorney to say, construction cannot be done with this. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Yes. Just one more. You, uh, thank you. Um, so my son passed away. Um, so how long ago? It was four years ago. But I wanted to do something with my family for his birthday, and that's this Saturday. And I wanted to find out if that would be okay. Where are you going? Right. Vachon. We're going to the Live Oak Park. And okay. Can you make sure that they're allowed to celebrate her? Um, I won't, won't say celebrate, but acknowledge her son's passing and that he's allowed to uh, attend. So Saturday, if whatever their plans are, he's allowed to attend. 
And as far as the monitor, so I, I completely understand what why you want to have the monitor and, and I'm not, I, but I will tell you um, that Alonso has been to a lot of interviews and so it is very difficult to wear a monitor to, and people want to give you a job. And so his friend was explaining to him too, because I overheard the phone and, uh, and I overheard you say something too, and it made me think about something. Um, because a lot of people judge something that they don't know the whole story about. And, and that's an unfortunate thing because we've been dealing with this for a very long time and I'm still dealing with this. And this is one of the things that have caused a lot of problems for Alonzo. All right, here's the thing. I understand what you're saying. I'm internalizing it, but I, I, I want you to understand something. He needs structure. He doesn't have structure. And I am not trying to question your parenting skills, but this is what I see. Parents are trying to be friends with their children. They're acting like their friends, their, their children are their friends and adults. He is not, you're not technically an adult. You know why? Because you can't take care of yourself. You're living at home with your mother. You're using her home as a hotel room and she's letting you use it as a hotel room. You've been having issues since you've been a juvenile. We got the resisting arrest and search criminal trespass, criminal mischief, mischief um, unauthorized use of a vehicle, failure to identify, resi another resisting arrest, uh, search and transport. I'm ignoring that because that was taken into consideration. I mean, that was taken in consideration. And then you've been to TYC before. And you know what that tells me? That tells me a little bit that one, you need structure. And mom, you are not his friend, you are his parent. And you need to start laying down the law because otherwise he's gonna end up in prison. And if you violate the conditions that I've set for you, what's gonna end up happening is you could be looking at 10 years in prison. Here on out, everything that you do in your life, every decision that you're making, you need to ask yourself, is this something that could result in me going to prison for 10 years? If the answer is yes, don't do it. If the answer is maybe, don't do it. Because what I can tell you is, and Deputy Laura will tell you, Deputy Mejia and Ms. Abrams will tell you, at some point in time, when people violate conditions in this court, they always end up getting caught. You may not get caught the first time you violate it, but ultimately you end up getting caught because I'm serious about probation coming out doing field visits. And when they do, and something happens, you know what ends up happening? I receive a motion to revoke. And when I get that motion to revoke, if it's in proper order, I check the box and a warrant is issued. You are picked up by the police and you are taken into custody. And either your mom makes bond for you or she does not. If she doesn't make bond for you, you are brought over in orange after having been at the jail with other inmates, sharing toilets, sharing clothing. And then I hear your motion. And if it turns out that it is true and I find it's true, then you're looking at 10 years in the prison. Do you understand? Yes, so your mom is allowing you to do things that she should not be allowing you to do. So you're going to have to check yourself. I don't know if that's something that young people still say, but that's what they said when I was growing up. You're going to have to put yourself in check because your mom looks at you. Your mom loves you. Your mom looks at you as still as her little boy. You're an adult. So if you love your mom, you're gonna to have to start doing things appropriately so your mom doesn't have to come to court begging you and not seeing the fact that she has a son who came to court for sentencing and you're using marijuana. And you're probably using it in her house in the form of candy bars or whatever. And you're in the back room with your girlfriend having sex or whatever. And you're gonna end up, if you continue on that vein, you guys are gonna forget something. And you're going to end up bringing a grandchild into this world for her and she's going to end up caring for it and that grandchild is going to be stuck with the father who has all this history who doesn't have their life in order do you understand yes ma'am all right so probation will go over conditions with you thank you judge with excuse yes brandon sierra are the parties here for brandon jose espinosa three five two zero seven state jail felony uh, 
there. Hold on. This is a seven city. Yeah, it's I thought there's a report in here. This is an announcement. Yeah, it's, it's a seven city. He no show judge, so it came back on the docket as an announcement. That's why it's not sentencing. It was a bond forfeiture. You're Jose Espinosa. Yes, sir. Here in cost number 235207. And earlier, you're here with your attorney, Mr. Deucer, earlier. Yes, sir. You uh, pleaded guilty to the state jail uh, felony of uh, theft. A pre sentence report has been prepared, and the parties had an opportunity to review it. Yes, sir. Corrections or changes? No, sir. It's made a part of the record for all purposes, and I presume state no changes? Uh, no, Your Honor. The no, agreement is whatever sentence shall not exceed a cap of <clears throat> eight year, eight, uh, 18 months in the state jail. Please note <clears throat> the issues here. We've got a burglary of a building in 2015 where the defendant was on deferred or unadjudicated probation. That was revoked. He was sentenced to 15 months in the state jail <clears throat> in 2019. He was revoked on February 8th of 2019, 15 months in the state jail. Strangely enough, this new indictment states he was uh, states that he committed an offense on June 30th of 2019, which would, which would have been what three and uh, no four and a half months. After he was sentenced to 15 months in the state jail. That's weird. Yes, sir. Uh, can, what, what do y'all? He did all counting time. Yes, sir. He had, he had, he had been he had accruing had, time. Yes, sir. He had I went accruing. to state future for that. It's just the yeah. only reason that I got broken that probation is just because I couldn't stay clean. But I mean, I don't drink now. I don't even think girls or anything. It's been four years that I haven't gotten in trouble. I just really just live with my family now. So. I'm married. I have two kids. Mm -hmm. I go to school right now. That um, the other one. Yeah, let me see that other case, please. On the computer. Which other case? The one that he was on probation for in the burglary of the building. Uh, I don't have a number for that. <laughs> yes, it was he was calling. I went to safety uh, when I was focused because I needed to help with uh, substance abuse. Mm -hmm. It was here with, with Jefferson Parish? Yes. <laughs> His probation was revoked in 2019. Uh, I mean, doesn't have a number. I don't have a number in the pre-sentence report. I think it looks like it had a burglary of a building from 24. It's burglary of a building. Okay. I believe it was F. It was next door. F14. Can you pull um, the motion to revoke probation in the order? Um, Well, if you is that what you're asking? on the judgment? Scroll on that next page. Does she? I don't know what she, what her practice is when she goes on a motion. Does she write on that? Like I did? I, I don't. I don't know. This might have just been the first one. Well, I don't know if judgment. it's like. Give me the judgment then. <clears throat> I pled true to one and three. Found guilty. Mm -hmm. But true to one and three. So it's a revocation. That's fine. Read that back to that last statement he made to me about what he was um, revoked for. Uh, 
Give me a copy of the motion. Thank you, Kathleen. Well, this is what she wrote out here. I don't know what you wrote in there. I just need a copy of the kind motion. Kind of like you. Can you see the motion? Thank you. Go ahead. Well, Judge, the uh, it has the reporting things uh, that appears to be the only thing in history that he has, and uh, as he stated before, he uh, was involved in drugs back then, but he's let that happen, he's gone safety. And my understanding is uh, that's been successfully completed. Uh, he, he's got a lot going for him right now. Uh, he has a family that he takes care of regularly. He works at Dow Chemical and Maintenance Department. He's been he's been attending LIT, where he is very close to completion as a process operator. Uh, so he's got a lot going for him, and probate is appropriate for this young man. I will also point out that the there were two co-defendants uh, involved in this. One was his brother and another man named Gustavo Vargas. Both of them have already uh, received probation on this case. Uh, and his his situation, he was, he was the driver of the vehicle after the uh, theft had been committed. So he wasn't actually involved in, in the taking uh, of the items, even though uh, even though he admits to, to knowing what they were doing and was, and, and was the driver. So we, I don't feel like that his participation uh, is any worse and, and maybe even to a lesser extent than the other people who receive probation and he's got so much going for him in his life right now uh we think that he could successfully complete probation that's where i see what to do <laughs> your honor uh the defendants previously received 15 months uh he's had a chance for probation on the burglary of the building case he was not able to uh, comply with the terms then uh not reporting 
pleading true to not reporting as well as uh i know not being able to stay in the county um, your honor also him failing to appear and after that after committing this offense on december 22nd 2022 i don't believe the defendant's a good candidate for complying with terms of probation or following the rules the state's asking for the 18 months state deal anything you want to say sir uh, i just need it. just one answer i'm going to say you can put me on civil tolerance sir i live i got a receipt here from my daughter i just have this for papers last week sir and if i was so for the 20th if i had no 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 interest of completing or, or paying for my consequences that i did four years ago I, i've been doing good for four years sir. i haven't even the only thing on my record now is just a ticket for not for not stopping at a place not stopping completely at a stop sign. so that's it do you know what the truth is yes sir do you know what the truth means truth yes sir what does that mean to you telling you the truth sir. and that's the truth i was just why was your probation revoked the first pro time because i had i I couldn't stay clean, so I, I again I got in report because the same thing because I that that was back then. So you can you can hear a part of me now. You can you can do blood set. I don't. Oh, I don't we're gonna to work on your schedule. No, no, we're no. gonna do what you want. No, sir. I just I just yeah. need to maintain my balance, sir. I mean, it's I just need one chance, so that's all it takes. So you failed to report. Is that what happened? You just didn't report on that other probation because I couldn't stay clean. Yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Why didn't you report? Because I was scared, so because I was dirty. No, I not that. Oh, I mean, why couldn't you report? Why didn't you report? They could help you. No, it was just, it was just, it was. I was younger, sir, and I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't. Did know you know better? better? I didn't know better. Back then. How old were you? I was twenty at the time, sir. Oh. Oh, is that like a three-year-old? <laughs> You were an adult for three years. Give me one chance, sir. Please, sir. I have two kids, sir. Three and three. Three and three. How many did you have three years ago? Nothing, sir. Everything happened after after this accident happened, sir. I've changed my life, well, sir. I got married. I got two kids now. I got seventy-two percent down on my degree. I got. I should be projected to graduate on spring of two thousand twenty-three, sir, from LIT. I got a I got a permanent job right now, dog chemical as a maintenance guy, sir. What did you? Why did they revoke your probation? So I was ready to appear, sir. Hmm? Ready to appear to, to my probation day. No, that, that was him. Yes, sir. That was the only reason. That was yes, sir. Because I was going to say, you went to Mexico. Yes, sir. that's what I'm saying. I'm no, afraid. you didn't. That's not what you're saying. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I mean, I didn't. I, Did you forget you went to Mexico? You fled to Mexico? Because I was scared, sir. I was young. Sir. So, so let's get this straight. So, your probation was revoked yes, sir. in. February 8th of 2019. Yes, sir. You learn your lesson? Yes, sir. You did learn a lesson. And I just made a slip. Did sir. you you made a slip? Yes, sir. When did you make the slip? In 2019, sir. When how I many, did. how long after you were sentenced to state months. jail and your probation was revoked? How long was it, it that you that you committed another a offense? A few months, sir. A few months. And then after that, there's nothing less than three months. Yes, sir. And after that, there was nothing more, sir. I learned my lesson, sir. I just need one chance, sir. I'm sorry, you had your chance on the last case that you failed on. Anything else? Mm -hmm. So, any further from the station? Yeah. Look, you're pleading. This court gets so frustrated because you have more than you you've had a you had a chance when you placed you on probation then the lady next door placed you on probation in 2015 you failed on that in 2019 you fled the country in my way back. you fled your country this country we couldn't find you i turned myself in though, so 
I tell myself wait, wait, to, wait. to the probation wait. officer. Here's the problem. Yes, Listen to me very closely. You don't set the rules. You're not the judge. You're not the boss, but you decided you were in your case. You set the rules. But you learned a lesson. You learned such a great lesson that in three months you were commit another crime. Not that I've never done anything more. So four years now. I'm sorry. One was too many. We made a big deal about it. We made a big deal. You fled to Mexico to run away from from this uh, answering to this crime and fessing up to it. So we sentenced you. Right after that, you commit another crime, and here you are. But you really learned your lesson this time, really. Yes, sir. I have. I have. Look, sir. I can. If I can just show you. And don't hide behind your kids. Don't use them as a shield from your responsibilities. Don't use them as a shield from your mistakes when you knew better. Shame on you. Shame on you for being a bad parent. Shame on you for being a bad person who didn't follow the rules. I had them, sir. I had them after they didn't help me, sir. They weren't, they weren't, they were not even. They weren't even in my timeline until it, this happened and I learned my lesson, sir. I got married in 2021, sir. Okay. So she had children. And no, I had I had my, my, my first baby was born in 2020. This this case happened in 2019, July 2019. It's four years now, sir, and I have not committed any yeah. other crimes. Yeah. And I've and I've been I've been I've been going to school all this time right. and I can show you my, my records right here from school, sir. My life team, sir. Why did you get in trouble a second time? How many times does it? Do you keep interrupting everybody? Is that the way you do things? You interrupt everybody because you want it on your terms. You're the boss. That's it. No, no. It's it's pretty just like the guy before you. You want to be in control. It's your it's your rules. You want to set your rules, and and you want to be able to have all the time in the world to try to talk your way out of responsibility. Shouldn't have committed the second crime. Shouldn't have committed the first one. Anything else? No, sir. Earlier, you pleaded guilty here voluntarily to this state jail felony of theft. Uh, in 235207, you were mentally competent to do so. You understand the consequences of pleading guilty. <laughs> there was sufficient evidence supporting your guilty plea from State's Exhibit 1 admitted here to find you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. I now find you guilty once again of another crime. And this is the state jail felony of theft. I am following this agreement. You were hereby sentenced to confinement in the state jail for 18 months, as the state has requested. And I find that the state's request is reasonable under these circumstances. You were placed on probation earlier in three uh, in the early case of cause number event. Of, um, fourteen dash two zero three eight six. While on probation, you violated the probation not only failing to report but fleeing to Mexico. <clears throat> you returned back. Your probation was revoked. You were sentenced to fifteen months in the state jail for burglary of a building then just three months later you were uh, committing the state jail felony of <coughs> theft along with some other people who were stealing things from people who were shopping at the HEB pantry Also, apparently there was a, an event at a Walmart as well. You were the driver 
of the car that was used in the thefts <clears throat> and the items that were stolen were found in the car. Well, it's nice that I guess that you have now come to appreciate and understand that the rules are supposed to be followed and people are not supposed to be victimized. And you say you got children now. The question is, why couldn't you have grown up and be a mature adult like you are on your own without having children? to say, well, now I'm going to follow the rules. It ought to be enough that you should appreciate and respect other people and their property. <clears throat> I don't really find it, and I'm a parent, I'm a grandparent. And I can't imagine using my children or my grandchildren children to throw them in front of uh, a judge to try to ask for leniency because those children, <clears throat> they're not part of this. It's your choices, your decisions that you're here for. The children don't have anything to do except <clears throat> your poor role model. And you need to do a lot better. That is all. Don, uh, Keisha Green is next. <laughs> She's a, well, you want to be a Yeah. And if Judge C... Blah, 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 blah. And if Judge Stevens has inmates making...